or, or Brockington yet. Uh, so we'll just give it one more minute and then uh, we'll we'll proceed. Perfect, and I think uh, we have a, a full house now. So uh, good morning and welcome to the Built Heritage Subcommittee meeting of April 13th, uh, 2021. I'd like to call the members to order. Due to the continuing state of the emergency, uh, state of emergency due to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting is being held remotely through Zoom. Though we are meeting virtually, the land on which Ottawa is built upon is unceded Algonquin Anishinaabe territory. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that the people of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation have lived on this territory for millennia. Their culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture this land. The City of Ottawa honors the people in the land of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation, and the City of Ottawa honors all First Nations, Inuit and Métis people, and their valuable past and present contributions to this land. Please note that those who do not need to participate in the meeting can also watch it live on the Ottawa City Council YouTube channel. A reminder to participants to please keep your microphones muted until I call upon you to speak. I will provide each committee member with the opportunity to ask questions or comment on each item in the order in which they raise their hand in Zoom. For panelists, the raise hand option is found at the bottom of the participants list. For those calling in, press star nine to raise your hand. The committee coordinator and I will be watching for those cues. Members are also reminded to submit any motions, visual supports, or declarations of interest in writing to the coordinator at their earliest opportunity. Although the deadlines have passed for residents to register to speak and provide written submissions to this subcommittee, residents may still make submissions to planning committee on item two, heritage permit issues through delegated authority and written submissions to council on all other matters. If you are having technical difficulties signing into the meeting, you can contact the committee coordinator by calling 613-580-2424, extension 22953. A reminder that if participants are having technical issues with their Zoom connection, they may call in using the backup telephone number provided by the coordinator. For today, I have received no regrets. Could the committee coordinator please call the roll? A reminder to members to unmute themselves when they are called. Member Halsell. I see you on the screen, Member Halsell. Uh, member Podolsky. I'm present, hello everybody. Uh, Councillor Gower. Here. Uh, Councillor McKenney. Present. Member Conforti. Present. Councillor Brockington. Good morning. Councillor Moffat. Here. Vice Chair Quinn. Present. Chair King. Present. You have quorum, Chair. Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? And I see uh, member Conforti has uh, raised her hand. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I'm declaring potential interest on item number three, which is the application to alter 94 Crichton Street, a property designated under part five of the Ontario Heritage Act and located in New Edinburgh, Edinburgh uh, Heritage Conservation District as the architect responsible for the design of the addition is the direct departmental representative of one of my clients. Thank you for uh, providing that uh, declaration of interest. Are there any other declarations of interest? Seeing none, are the minutes of Tuesday, March 9th, 2021 confirmed? Carried. Carried. Confirmed. So the first item on the agenda uh, revolves around planning, infrastructure, and economic development, right away, heritage and urban design services, heritage register annual report 2020. Can staff please provide an overview of this report? Good morning, Chair and members of committee. The Heritage Register Annual Report for 2020 summarizes demolition of listed heritage buildings and the request for removal that staff received over the past year. An overview of the Heritage Register work plan is also included in this report. Next slide, please. 
In 2016, City Council approved procedures regarding the Heritage Register that require staff to prepare an annual report addressing demolition and removal from the register. Section 27 of the Ontario Heritage Act states that prior to the removal of a reference to a property from the register, Council must consult its Municipal Heritage Committee. All Heritage Register removals must be approved by Council. The report today has been prepared to fulfill both of these requirements. Next slide. There are three ways in which staff would recommend removal of a property from the Heritage Register. Uh, number one, uh, through request by property owner. In order to request removal of a property, an uh, owner must complete our online form, the form for buildings listed on the Heritage Register and submit it to Heritage Planning staff. We review the request and make a recommendation to you uh, and council regarding the request for removal in our annual report. The second uh, method is the notice of intention to demolish. So this is the 60 day notice. In order to demolish a building listed on the Heritage Register, the owner must submit the notice of intention to demolish. Once this form has been received, staff have 60 days to determine if the building should be recommended for designation under the Ontario Heritage Act. The ward councillor and the chair of this committee are notified. If staff determine that the building does not merit designation, no report is prepared unless it's requested by the councillor or chair. Once the 60 day period has passed, a demolition permit can be issued. The building remains listed on the heritage register until it is demolished. The third option would be a staff initiated removal. So this is when staff identify inconsistencies on the register, we include them in our report recommending council make the adjustment accordingly. Next slide, please. In this report, staff recommend removing reference to a total of 10 properties from the Heritage Register. Each of the 10 listed buildings were demolished. Seven were demolished after submitting the, submit, the submitting written notices of intention to demolish and the expiry of the 60 days. The other three are staff initiated removals. A summary of each property is included in the report. Staff also received four requests to remove properties from the owners uh, and staff reviewed each request. We do not recommend removals from this group. Based on our review, these properties continue to meet the listing criteria and contain heritage, cultural heritage value. Next slide, please. Later in the report, uh, priority work plan items related to the heritage register are identified. This includes a study of the Carlington Veterans Housing Projects, which will begin later this year. We've also noted an inventory of modernist buildings, so post uh, the Second World War, uh, anticipated to begin in 2022. Additional reviews will be conducted as time and resources allow. Heritage planning staff are actively preparing for Bill 108 regulations to come into effect. The province delayed implementation. It was scheduled initially for this past January and we are looking at the province's new requirements for adding and removing listings on the Heritage Register. Staff will update this committee as the information becomes available. That concludes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Marshall, for the very detailed uh, presentation uh, on this item. Uh, we did receive correspondence uh, from a residence concerning uh, the removal of 217 Strathcona Avenue from the register. And we also received correspondence uh, from uh, Heritage Ottawa as well. Uh, we do have uh, Heritage Ottawa uh, registered to speak. Oh, and I do see that um, um, we do have uh, uh, David Fleming from Her uh, Heritage Ottawa registered to speak. So I just wanted to see uh, if uh, he wanted to take advantage of this opportunity uh, to provide a, a deputation to uh, the subcommittee. Hello. Hello, David. Hi. <laughs> uh, no, I don't particularly wish to speak. Uh, I was concerned if there was going to be a lot of opposition to it, then we would speak. I, I sent you a letter yesterday outlining our uh, support for uh, for this report 
and the initiatives that uh, the heritage planning section hopes to take in the future to add to the list. I guess the one major problem we have is that <clears throat> we, uh, as long as you keep uh, demolishing buildings, then the uh, stock of heritage housing diminishes. And uh, I made a suggestion in my letter that perhaps you might want to look into uh, replacing it with uh, some other buildings that are in the inventory, but were close, but didn't quite make the register um, for every building that is lost, just so we don't diminish the, uh, <coughs> the stock of buildings on the register. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I appreciate the, those comments and just wanted to see if there were questions uh, for Mr. Fleming. And I see that uh, member Podolsky has raised uh, uh, his hand. Sorry, it was not for Mr. Fleming. It's for staff. Uh, when okay. Okay. So uh, thank you, Mr. Fleming. Then I don't see any questions for you. So uh, uh, does uh, committee have any questions for staff? And, and obviously member uh, Podolsky does. Yes, I'd like to compliment uh, Avery Marshall on a very clear report. I think that uh, it's deserving of uh, recognition. And thank you very much, Avery, for that. My question has to do with the very ambitious uh, work plan for the Heritage Register, knowing everything that the staff has in front of it. But I'd be very interested in uh, if, if you would report back in the next committee meeting or two about the rough timetable for the commencement of each of the elements in the work plan, and particularly the post-war um, modern inventory, which is a huge, huge project, as well as uh, parks and other open spaces. So you don't have to respond today, but certainly uh, in the next couple of meetings, if it's appropriate. I can jump in here if you like, uh, Chair. Um, just yes, in terms of the work plan, I think for this year, um, given everything that's going on in the world, we're focusing on finishing the veterans housing, well, starting and finishing the veterans housing study. Um, as Member Podolsky likely knows, the post-war piece is a big, uh, a big project. Um, so I'm not sure that we'll have a timeline on that in the next couple of months, but. Um, I think, you know, as, as the work plan gets further developed and, and we have more certainty around how we're going to approach it and, and, and that sort of thing, we will for sure keep the committee informed. Thank you. Great, thanks, Leslie. And uh, Member Brockington has his hand raised as well. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everyone. Um, to staff, can you just elaborate further on how COVID impacts your work you do field work, which is outside. Do you go on to the property or are your observations from the curb? So any site visits that are, are conducted by our team would always be from the right of way. So the sidewalk or the street, unless we have a, a permission from the property owner. Typically we do, uh, do a photograph or a site visit from the street and sidewalk. So how does COVID uh, prohibit or stall this work? Uh, so typically it's uh, actually tied on the research side. So with the closure of library and archives, it can um, be very challenging to access records uh, for, for buildings. Uh, so if we're preparing, for example, a designation report or even uh, background on uh, properties that are listed, it can be um, quite a delay uh, getting access or and in some cases we've been told we're unable to gain access to certain records. Uh, so for example, uh, microfilm, uh, the library needs to be open main branch uh, floor three. So in instances like that, it can be tough to, to get the information that we need to verify facts and, and do our diligence on that research. Thank you. Um, just my final question is about um, the Carlington Veterans Housing Study. It's great to see this. Um, can you just elaborate? You know, I'm just looking at your report here. 2021, it says um, you'll complete a report or a study. 
2022, you'll complete an inventory. What does the study entail? So the direction we'd received uh, through the Heritage Inventory Project was to conduct an analysis of uh, veterans housing projects one and two, so the 1946 and 1947 subdivisions. And so at this point in time, we're collecting research and we're, I think, going to be reaching out to your team and to the community soon to, to determine what the scope of it is um, that's yet to be discussed and decided upon. Okay, and then the actual inventory collection is scheduled for next year. Uh, yes, so I think it would depend what the scope for the veterans area would become. I don't know that we'd want to review it again, uh, but it could it could fit into both, certainly. Okay, fair enough. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Brockington. Um, I don't see any other hands raised. So uh, do any of the members have any other comments on this item? And I don't see anybody raising their hand. So I just wanted to comment and say that uh, obviously the heritage planning staff administer the heritage register according to uh, the heritage register procedures approved by council and the Ontario Heritage Act. As we know, the heritage register is not meant to be a static document. The register will continue to evolve to better reflect Ottawa's buildings, histories, and communities. And uh, despite the difficulties of the pandemic, which I think that uh, Councillor Brockington was outlining with even doing assessments, we, we really do thank staff for the work that they have undertaken in providing uh, this annual report concerning uh, the register to the subcommittee. I also want to commend staff for the work plan and the work surrounding the implementation of Bill uh, 108 that has been delayed uh, multiple times, uh, which is being developed to help manage change and which allows the city to be accountable for all processes and recommendations. So I wanna thank you for uh, that work. And uh, is this a report carried? Carried. carried. Uh, this report is scheduled to be presented to council on April 28th, 2021. Our next item is uh, heritage permits issued through delegated authority uh, 2020. Can staff please provide an overview of this report? Thank you, through you chair. Good morning, councillors and members of the subcommittee. This item concerns the annual staff report on heritage permits issued through delegated authority in 2020. Next slide, please. In accordance with Schedule J, Section 33.8 of the Delegation of Authority Bylaw, staff are required to provide an annual report at least once every calendar year on heritage permits issued through delegated authority to the appropriate standing committee of council. In 2020, 102 heritage permits were issued in accordance with the Ontario Heritage Act under the authority delegated to staff. These permits related to properties designated under parts four and five of the act and related to a variety of alterations. The average timeline for the issuance of permits was 10 business days from the date an application was deemed complete. Due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, only six heritage permits were issued as part of the city's heritage grant program. The normal number is approximately 30. Only one permit was issued under delegated authority for heritage permits, uh, for um, heritage properties located in the rural area. Next slide, please. The graphs on this slide show the breakdown of permits issued according to designation and location. The vast majority of permits were issued under part five of the act, which relate to properties located in heritage conservation districts. As the pie chart on the right of the slide shows, most permits were issued in wards 12, 13 and 14, where the majority of the city's HCDs are located. Ward 12, Rideau Vanier, was the most active with 35 permits issued under delegated authority. Next slide, please. 
the majority of permits were issued for minor alterations to designated properties. Staff issued six permits for the construction of new additions, five for new accessory buildings and structures, 11 permits to undertake restoration work, and one permit for minor demolition not requiring council approval. That concludes this brief presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Adrian, for the in-depth report. And I know uh, before uh, we move uh, to uh, questions from the subcommittee, um, I want to give some latitude uh, to Leslie to uh, make a, a brief a comment uh, since this is your uh, first presentation to the subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for indulging me. I had hoped to just introduce the committee to Adrian Benvik, who's a new uh, heritage planner with my team. So he started with us in November um, as a planner one. So just wanted to uh, say you'll be seeing his, his face, um, hopefully in person at some point in the future, but right now uh, via Zoom. So uh, uh, welcome, just welcoming Adrian to the team. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, in terms of this presentation, uh, we've received uh, uh, no correspondence uh, to date and no speakers are registered. Um, so uh, we are now going to move on to subcommittee questions. So Adrian, uh, will, this is the first time he'll be placed into the hot seat uh, since I see there is a question uh, pending from uh, Councillor Gower. Thank you, Chair, and welcome, Adrian. Um, I was just curious, out of the 102 permits issued, do we know approximately how many um, would have received the um, the funding, the grant that we provide for heritage repairs and uh, renovations? Um, well, thank you, Councillor, for your question. Um, I, I do know that um, uh, out of the permits we issued, only, only six did receive funding, but maybe I'll um, see if Leslie would like to answer this question. Sure. Um, yeah, because of COVID, we reduced the grant program last year. So our normal budget of $300,000, we only gave out $100,000 in grant money. Um, so whereas we normally, as part of this report, you would see about 30 to 35 of the projects would be receiving grant funding this year uh, for 2020, it was only six and they were, they were larger scale projects. Um, so next year's report will likely have a higher number of permits because of the grant program. And are we seeing any general trends in the number of permits issued from year to year? Um, 2019 over 2020, like if, if we take the grant program permits out of, out of the equation, we issued more permits, uh, about 30% more permits last year than, than in previous years. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gower. And I did see that member Hassel had her hand up. I just wanted to see if uh, she was still going to ask a question. Uh, mine largely, again, had to do with the impacts to COVID and the discrepancy between the, the two years. But I suppose, um, are you anticipating in the, in the years to come um, more of an increase in the number of permits requested? Thank you, Member Halsell. Um, I think with um, the addition of the new Clemo Monkland Linden Terrace uh, HCD, we'll probably see an uptick in um, heritage permits issued. And um, of course, with with new designations and such, um, it'll it'll likely increase over time. Thank you, Adrian, and welcome to the team. And uh, thank you for uh, the questions. I don't see any hands up uh, for any more questions of staff. Just wanted to take this opportunity to ask if any of the members have any comments on this item generally. And I'm not seeing hands there. So uh, obviously while this is pro forma, the uh, delegation of authority by law requires that an annual report of heritage permits issued under delegated authority is brought forward to the subcommittee at least once every calendar year. This report has been prepared to provide information on permits issued through delegated authority in 2020. Uh, once again, uh, uh, through the difficulties with the pandemic, we really do thank staff for the work that they have undertaken in providing this annual report uh, to the subcommittee. Is this report carried? Carried. 
This report it, uh, will be submitted to planning committee on May 13th, 2021. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, application to alter 94 Crichton Street, a property designated under part five of the Ontario Heritage Act and located in the new Edinburgh District Heritage Conservation District. Member Conforti will now be leaving the meeting uh, per uh, the declaration of, of interest that was made. Can staff please provide an overview of this report? Thank you, through you, Chair. This item concerns the application to alter 94 Crichton Street, a property designated under part five of the Ontario Heritage Act and located in the new Edinburgh Heritage Conservation District. Next slide, please. The subject property is located on the north side of Crichton Street between Queen Victoria and Kiefer Streets. 94 Crichton Street is classified as a contributing building in the new Edinburgh HCD. Next slide, please. The original house was constructed in 1892 and is an example of late 18th century vernacular residential construction in this area. The house is a one and a half story rectangular building with a medium pitched front gabled roof. It features paneled and turned barge boards with scroll work, asymmetrical windows with stone sills. The upper floor is clad in stucco and the ground floor has a simulated stone veneer on the front facade. Next slide, please. The house is situated between two taller, newly constructed homes. 90 Crichton Street, shown here to the left of the house, was constructed in 2020. And 96A Crichton Street, shown to the right of the house, was constructed in 2008. Next slide, please. The photos on this slide show views of the rear of the property from Queen Victoria Street. As the photo on the left demonstrates, the original house is currently not visible behind its neighbor at 90 Crichton Street. The proposed addition will however be visible from this view after it is constructed. Next slide, please. The applicant is proposing to construct a two-story rear addition to the existing house. A one-story projection will be built up to the side lot line. In order to facilitate the construction, the applicant will be seeking a minor variance for relief from the heritage overlay in the zoning bylaw. Next slide, please. The proposed addition will be 76.2 centimeters taller than the roof line of the existing house. It has been designed in a contemporary style with dark metal roofing, cement board or stucco and light colored uh, painted wood or cement board paneling on the rear facade. The addition will be only partially visible from Crichton Street. Next slide, please. A new shed dormer is proposed on the second story. The proposed one story projection will have glazed panels on the front and rear facades and will feature a thin profile flat roof. The proposal will retain much of the existing rear yard landscaping. Next slide, please. The proposal generally conforms to the guidelines in the new Edinburgh HCD plan relating to new additions to contributing properties and landscaping. The addition will be of its own time, located in the rear and consistent with the streetscape. Heritage staff are of the opinion that the addition will be complementary and subordinate to the existing house distinguishable from the original and compatible with it. The roof line of the original house will be maintained in the addition. The addition will not uh, remove or obstruct the heritage attributes of the original. And the proposed cladding materials are sympathetic to the existing building and the rear yard will be substantially retained. Next slide, please. Subsection 8.5.3 General Guideline 4 of the HCD plan provides that the height of any addition to an existing building shall not exceed the height of the existing roof line. 
heritage staff have reviewed the proposal in light of the language of the subsection. Although the proposal does not conform to the wording of this guideline, staff are of the opinion that the proposal is consistent with its spirit and intention and that of the HCD plan as a whole. The taller contemporary homes on either side of the subject property mitigate the impact of the increased height of the addition in the streetscape. Next slide, please. The app applicant's proposal is consistent with the standards and guidelines for the conservation of historic places in Canada. The applicable standards include standards 1, 11, and 12. Next slide, please. The present application, <clears throat> excuse me, was posted on the city's development application search tool. The new Edinburgh Community Alliance was notified of the application and also met with the applicant. Heritage Ottawa was notified of the application, as were neighbours within 30 metres of the subject property. Chair King is aware of the application and provided comments, which are included in the staff report. Next slide, please. Heritage staff are recommending approval of the application to alter the property at 94 Crichton Street. Staff are also requesting that authority be delegated for minor design changes and that a two-year expiry date be attached to the heritage permit. Thank you. I'd like to uh, thank you for, once again, uh, another detailed report uh, to the subcommittee. Uh, we did receive a uh, correspondence uh, on this item from Heritage Ottawa, uh, dated April 12th in support of the staff recommendations. And we also do have a number of registered speakers, uh, starting uh, with Randy Marr. So I don't know if Randy Marr is on the call. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, community members. Um, I appreciate uh, Adrian Banwick's very uh, comprehensive staff report, um, along with that great presentation. Um, and with me today is Sam Cox, who is with uh, Unpoised Architecture. So um, I, I think the recommendation pretty much stands on, on its own for your consideration. And we'd be pleased to answer any um, uh, questions or concerns that are raised. The only thing I might uh, add to uh, um, Adrian's uh, presentation is the fact that we did meet with the new uh, Edinburgh Heritage um, um, Committee um, very early on. Uh, walked them through the process, uh, allowed um, them to uh, uh, consider our application, and we're very pleased that they provided their endorsement to our uh, to our application. So, other than that, uh, I think, um, as I, I mentioned, we'll be pleased to answer any questions or concerns. Uh, thank you uh, for that, Mr. Mar, and I do know that uh, uh, Mr. Cox. Uh, is supposed to provide a, a potentially a slide presentation to the committee. Just wanted to know if that's also still uh, going ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone. I, I think what a, uh, Adrian had presented is, is, is pretty clear. Uh, so not necessary to show any of the slides that I've provided unless uh, it's to assist with any questions. Okay, uh, thank you for that. So. Are there any questions uh, for uh, the delegations by uh, the subcommittee? And I don't see hands raised. Uh, um, does, uh, do any committee members have uh, any questions for staff? And uh, once again, I don't uh, see any hands raised. Uh, do any of the subcommittee members have any gen general comments on, on this item? And uh, seeing no hands raised, uh, I just wanted to state as ward councillor, uh, I did note in my statement in the report that the proposal put forward is sympathetic to the heritage characteristics of New Edinburgh. Uh, the addition that is being advanced is only slightly higher than the current home and would architecturally provide for all the needs of the family while also making the addition distinguishable without detracting from the current heritage structure. Acknowledging the strong support of the heritage of the New Edinburgh uh, Community Alliance and their heritage committee on this file, uh, I do support the addition 
as proposed. Is this report carried? Yes, carried. Carried. Uh, this report is scheduled to be presented to Council on April 28th, 2021. Um, there are no in-camera items uh, for this meeting. In terms of information previously distributed, there is an IPD listed on the agenda for information relating to designation refusals. Um, there are no uh, notices of motion to date, and there are uh, and now inquiries, there, there are no inquiries to date. In terms of other business, there is a planning circulation on the agenda, which was distributed to members prior to the meeting. Members of the public have the opportunity to comment through dev apps on ottawa.ca. An Ontario Heritage Act application for new construction would be considered at a later date. There is also a planning circulation uh, and, and that planning circulation, uh, as I just noted, is for uh, 406 and 408 Bank Street. Is there any other business? Seeing none, on adjournment, is the motion carried? Yes, carried. Carried. We are, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank the you, next Mr. regular Chair. meeting. Thank you. Uh, the next regular meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.